is uh, Rusty and then six, a little after six. All right, so um, start the meeting. I uh, it is Monday, uh, uh, June seventh. Uh, More time select for me. Our first live meeting in well over a, a year since the pandemic. Thank you. I know Don's first live meeting. He's been on the board over a year. Um, so year and a half. So we called the meeting to order. We also have it going on Zoom as well. So um, people, let's, there's, there's a few people on. Um, we just, Al, uh, Harley's looking to get in. So we've got a few people on uh, Zoom. Hi, Hadley, how are you? Hi, I'm good, how are you? Good, thank you. And um, the rest of us here. So I will try to if I'm looking and looking at this, I'm not I'm not listening or paying attention to you. I'm trying to uh, do this as well. So let's go ahead and start the meeting. Um, uh, call the order. Is, is any uh, general public comments? sure you know people are picking up after themselves when they leave and uh, take advantage of it's nice out there and you know bring your bug spray there's a lot of ticks around any space um anything else is anyone on um online general public comment um, i'll i'll make a comment Hadley, sure, sure. uh i just wanted to announce that we have a new valley reporter staff writer he's actually on this call his name is alex dickinson so he will be covering meetings from here on out that's great well Thank you, Hadley. We appreciate uh, your coverage in the last, uh, what was it, how long you've been here? A couple of years? Been, uh, almost two years, yeah. Yeah, well, good. Thank you. I appreciate it. You moving on to bigger and better things? Yeah, thank you. Good. And uh, Alex, welcome. Um, as we're holding our meetings live, you're welcome to come down here uh, in Moortown and join us going forward. All righty, is there any other general public comments? Very good, so let's go ahead and move on to the first agenda item, and that is the face covering mandate. Anyone have any uh, thoughts or discussions on the mandate? You're talking about the Moortown. The Moortown face covering mandate. I, I guess I love the opinion that you feel back to Is that state right. I mean, that's, and I think everywhere now, I think really, um, personally, I would uh, think that we are now at the stage where we could take that mass mandate uh, away, you know, rescind the mass mandate. Um, you know, 
here, like you said, if you're fully vaccinated, really, you know, let's listen to the science. We put the masks on when the science said to. You now the science is saying you've had your vaccination, you're safe. I'm gonna go with that. Uh, so I'd move to rescind the mask. Mm -hmm. Effectively. In about two seconds. Second. <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion? All in favor, but I. Hi. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> now you may unmask. Who is that? <laughs> I have to start shaving again. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, everyone, for um, you know throughout this pandemic, you know, uh, adhering to the mandate, and I think we all have uh, been better for it. So next item up, we have Chuck Burt. Chuck is with our. He's our CB fiber. Um, uh, ambassador or such uh, delegate. delegate is how we in this. So Chuck, um, I know you and I have talked in the past, but why don't you go ahead and what are you on? Yeah. Um, so I prepared a quick presentation deck. Um, I know these pages are two sided, and so in front, back, and back. Um, and uh, I'll get straight to the point. I'm here to ask for money. So we'll talk about what that means. It is worth noting it is difficult for CD Fiber to receive tax money, but we think there's an opportunity here with the ARPA grants that are like we can get more tax. So um, I put together a little bit of background about what we're up to, uh, what we went through for number four, and progress we are to fill our field. Um, and then I'll get to the exact details of what we're looking for on the short term side, as well as uh, requests to maybe think a little more broadly. Um, so I think since the last time I was in here, we've actually grown by two communities since, uh, since then. We've added Duxbury and Washington to our roster. So you can see a map here. There are ongoing conversations with Waterbury, Bolton, um, and I just got a request last week from someone in Warren. Uh, whether those end up joining the district or not remains to be seen. We've gotten interest from towns in the past, which is going to prevent from there. So uh, right now, we, we are in these 20 communities here. Um, I just want to call out on, on slide three, broadband ROI is huge. A recent independent study of uh, EPD Fiber, which is a Chattanooga, Tennessee power and telecommunications district, found that the city-owned fiber network delivered Chattanooga a $2.69 billion return on investment in the first decade of operations. Um, and that was on an initial investment of about $200 million. Um, I've provided some links here. Uh, I can send this electronically since obviously clicking links on paper doesn't work. So, you know, if you want, if you want an electronic copies, so you can go to any of those uh, or those, you can have to send that around. Could you send that to Sasha? Sure. Yeah. Um, the need is great. Uh, I will point out that the following data I am going to provide is based on survey data. So there is likely a small amount of inherent self-selection bias in it, in that the people of the most need were more motivated to fill out our survey. Uh, but we did find that of surveyed premises, uh, 66 wore down premises were under 25. When I say 25, does everyone know what that means? No, okay. Uh, that is the speed of your service, which means you have uh, 25 download speed, 25 megabit per second, and 3 megabit per second upload speed. Um, a lot of us don't even have that much. At my residence prior to Elon Musk Starlink coming into town, uh, we, the best we could get was consolidated communications 3 megabit down and 0.7 megabit per second up. But by FCC definition, broadband is now defined as 25 Frankly, 25.3 is really not enough, even in today's day and age, with all the streaming activities, and video conferencing, a three megabit uplink connection will not get you much in the way of school children who need to attend virtual meetings. Um, so 38% uh, of respondents had less than 25.3. Again, a lot of them had best fit bias, three megabit down, 0.7 up. Uh, 81 premises, 46% had 25.3 and a smaller 16% had at least 100-100, which our goal is to have a minimum of 100-100 in every community. And in fact, by having that goal, unlocks all sorts of additional funding avenues that cannot be at our disposal to 
because the federal government is investing to try to get every community above 100 on the If we can get better than that, if we can get a thousand thousand bonus, there are some people who will pay extra money for those kinds of access speeds, myself included. Um, but 100, 100 is what we see as the, the baseline that most communities should have. The CB Fiber Network at a glance, we're going to slide five. Uh, it's approximately 1,300 miles long. It will, it would, when complete, serve fiber to 26,000 premises within our 20 communities, and it will cost us an estimated $46 million to build in time. Going to slide six, what we've done so far. So far, we've contracted for a feasibility study to make sure that this is even possible within. Uh, the, the cost structures we established, uh, and to devise a business plan to ensure that you know, this is something that can actually be self-sustaining. Since we are ineligible to receive ongoing tax money, we have to be revenue positive fairly quickly in order to be able to support the ongoing viability of this network. We've designed our phase network build strategy targeting underserved community members first. Um, with a plan to roll out to other people in those communities, because our goal is to serve every premises within our communities, uh, but obviously we'll follow along in communities that are not underserved later. So as an example, Barry City obviously has a lot of options with incumbent cable uh, options and even some fiber in some places. Um, it wouldn't make sense for us to prioritize their needs. We're prioritizing communities like Worcester and Middlesex in the north end of or town where access is underserved. We've actually gotten approved for a round of grants helping to fund our first three projects in Moortown, Roxbury, and Palace and East Montpelier, uh, around, sort of out toward the Maple Corner area. Um, and we worked toward pre-approval on a $4 million uh, VITA loan from the state. Um, now, this is a relatively high interest loan, as you can imagine, there's considerable risk in investing in something this early on. Uh, so the, the loan rates are set accordingly, um, but it is still provided by the state and it allows for those risks to be absorbed without the loan. This is all necessary prerequisite work before we ever get to building, but now we are finally ready to actually build. So the process to actually build a fiber network has kind of five major components other than that pool work that, that I just went through. The first is whole inventory. Some power providers have great inventory data on all of their poles within their network. Uh, GMP, for example, pretty much knows where all of their poles are. WEC, as another example, does not necessarily know where every pole is, what the distance and traverses are between poles, where poles have to cross in underground areas or particularly tricky uh, spans. And so pole inventory is the first step. The second step is network design. And the reason pole inventory is green is uh, we are in the process of kicking this off right now. We RFP uh, and bids back, and we are in the process of signing contracts this week to make this happen. Um, next step is network design. So this is actually creating the design around how the fiber is routed and where redundancies are put in. So if a tree falls on a line and snaps it, you can dynamically reroute service around when possible, just like power companies do. Um, next is make ready, which is actually preparing the, the poles themselves to take the fiber and have it strung. Then there's the construction, which is actually wiring the fiber and installing all the ancillary requirements, such as routing equipment, power, et cetera. And finally, what, what's referred to as drops, which is actually wiring the individual premises, homes, and businesses from the uh, fiber network. Um, on the next slide, slide eight, you'll have both the high level cost of our overall network for those five phases of build, as well as the more town component of those five phases. Um, so, uh, focusing in on more town facet, more town burden of this particular network will be approximately $2 million. Um, it costs about $33,000 to do the whole inventory, $33,000 to do the design. $280,000 to be made ready, $1.2 million to be construction, and uh, just shy of $400,000 to do those drops. Um, a lot of numbers quickly, so uh, any questions on that one before I move on? Chuck, just uh, real quick, yeah. that total, um, give me an example, what's the build out on that? Where is that, and how long will it be? 
Uh, that would assume we build all of one. Okay. Um, and I'll get to how we're going to police that in just a moment. Oh, very good. Actually, now, thank you. <laughs> uh, so our first priority is the underserved. So in Moortown, this is really the people along the Washington Electric Co-op power lines that have consolidated communications um, and not really getting into any uh, of the territory for Washington, um, for uh, Wheatfield, Shelly, and Valley Health. Um, this build out of construction is actually going to be begin this year. We anticipate service will start being offered around the beginning of 2022. Our second priority will be to build out from the core. And there are other reasons to build in places that still do have uh, service today to provide a local community option that is not a uh, not for profit entity. Um, there are some people who think that's a benefit. We'll have our charter things like net neutrality. And Happy to give a quick elevator to what that is, if you're not familiar with the concept. Um, and so beyond 2022, 2023 and onward, we'll start to look at building in areas that are not defined as underserved. So Barry City, for example, is a member of the community because they want a community access option. Uh, however, they're, they're by no means underserved by the definition. Um, and so we'll, we'll really you know, start to build out in those properly served areas, which is called overbuild, and we'll, we'll have to be mindful about how we do that, uh, but luckily we have EC Fiber who, who has already done a great job of balancing the underserved versus overbuild uh, process. In slide 10, um, the ARPA grant funds. So ARPA grants have investments in broadband infrastructure as one of the approved categories for uses of these funds. We are anticipating to receive some direct ARPA grant funds via the state. However, the amount and timing are as of yet totally uncertain. You know, the state it takes a little while for them to work through how any money gets appropriated. Um, and so we have some general senses of how much we think we might get. It is not nearly enough to reach that full 46 million, of course, um, nor would we expect it to be, but that is the amount we need over a longer time. Anyway, is not what we need in the next couple of years. Uh, towns are also expected to receive grant funds for various uses. Broadband is one of those main uses, although uses beyond include water uh, and sewer infrastructure improvements, providing direct assistance to people, businesses, or nonprofits economically impacted by the pandemic, or increasing pay, uh, increasing pay for essential workers, or restoring government services that were cut because of loss of tax revenues. So the, those are all the you know, levers you'll have at your disposal about how to use this money. Um, towns are going to receive half, towns are going to receive two sources of funds, a direct town grant, as well as an indirect county grant, because in Vermont, we don't really have active uh, counties, will just get distributed out to the towns as well. Um, towns are going to receive half of the town money in 2021, the other half in 2022, while the county portion of it, towns are anticipated to receive directly in 2021. Altogether, we anticipate the 20 CD fiber member towns are expected to receive around 16.5 million in combined town and county ARPA grant funds. Going to slide 11, you can actually see uh, our estimate of what that means for our entire district, but I've highlighted more town specifically. Um, we believe more town is set to receive approximately $532,000 in our funds over the course of the next two years. That is broken out as $164,000 of uh, town-based money, $367,000 of county-based money, and further broken out to be uh, $449,000 of 2021 money with an additional $82,000 of 2022. This is our calculations. We have not vetted them with um, you know, state and, and federal you know, attorneys or anything like that. So take it with a grain of salt. Obviously, the reality that we all face could be, could be a bit off of this, but we think it's at least directionally in the ballpark we, we would expect to see. I'll move to slide 12. I just want to call out that any funds provided to CD Fiber that are not in the form of a loan, thus reducing debt servicing, will directly lower our subscription rates, benefiting our communities. So there's a real incentive for us to be able to receive funds that don't come in the form of a loan. Long term, we're going to be taking a lot of loans as well to get to that 46 million. Um, and in the early days, that will be fairly high interest. 
Once we've established three to four years of revenues, we'll be able to turn around and be used for revenue bonds uh, to get those interest rates down and lower that debt servicing. Uh, but if we take a look at EC budgets here, uh, EC Fiber's yearly budget, debt servicing is a big line item for them because they had to do it all from debt. So we have a really interesting opportunity in front of us to be able to build out a good portion of this network without building as much debt as EC Fiber. So our ask, um, the short term is we would ask for $67,498, which would cover the first two phases of that build, the pull inventory and the design steps. Longer term, we estimate we will face an approximate $1 million shortfall in Moortown alone, uh, based on our current projections. So any additional funding that the Moortown Select Board deems worthwhile would be appreciated towards CD Fiber. We have all of those other things to consider. Obviously, sewer and water are not going to be a consideration for our town, but offsetting economic impact certainly what could be well within that consideration. So you know, we would ask you to, to consider that. Uh, it is worth noting we are in talks with some other towns in Middlesex to receive a majority portion of those funds. Uh, Middlesex is like more towns without sewer and water infrastructure, and they are also in a much worse state in terms of having far more underserved premises than we do. Um, so they basically it's a great use of our funds. So all that being said, next steps, I would love the board to discuss, ask me any questions you may have, and I'll answer them to the best of my ability uh, and consider this. Um, I'm not saying you have to consider this topic today if you want to take it away and think about it, or if you want me to come back with any additional information or, or research, happy to do so. However, uh, if the board does decide that either the short-term grant or, or some other grant as you see fit uh, is worthwhile, uh, we would draft and sign an MOU. It's worth noting we already have an MOU in the works. Um, it is with our attorney at president for Middlesex, uh, and we would obviously take whatever we draft from Middlesex and change it in whatever way is needed to support more tax needs. That's it. Thanks, Chuck. So Start to run the, the board here. So what do we have for questions for Chuck and CB Fiber? It is. That, that, that is for the entire thing. So the second priority goes up from the four. That's those were in the grand scheme. Yeah. But they necessarily don't go forward right away. No fun. They, and the people are already served. Right. They, they probably, you know, down the will need to get there. At least the two or three year time horizon, um, depending on how fun race it is. Revenue bonds could be, could be longer than that. Well, that's down the road, but it's at least people are already doing it. At least that 25 free definition of all right. What is the amount of power that they just did in Moortown? What is that? Uh, you mean the Wheatsfield Channel? Yeah. yeah. Um, my understanding is most residents got fiber, which means they should have uh, up to that 100, 100. Yeah. Um, but that may vary by location. I don't have the exact yeah. details on that. I could, I could try I to push on that a little bit more. No, no, I thought that's what it was. Yeah, they're, they're a great provider, and you know, we, we have a lot of respect for them and we've been looking for opportunities to actually partner with them. There was uh, a point at which we thought they were going to end up building our wartime portion of Jump Network, um, and that would have been really interesting. That kind of didn't end up panning out. We're actually partnering with WEC instead. WEC is going to build the network, um, but in any case, uh, we, we have a lot of respect for them. Kelly? No, I think you know the last year has demonstrated the importance of having good connectivity, uh, good speeds, both downloading and, and, and uploading. Uh, so I think it's something that, as a board, we uh, put on our list. I know we're hearing 
another presentation tonight. Uh, and then hopefully by our next meeting, we will be able to have uh, a presentation uh, put together about what all the funds are that we're getting. Um, I've spent some time uh, on some calls, Cheryl Lynn has, um, and at this point I'm not comfortable with, I'm just not qualified to share with everything that's there yet. I, I don't understand it enough yet. Um, so there's a lot of work to be done on that, but I think by our next meeting, I can present something and say, all right, this is what I think we're getting. Um, and then we can start uh, taking some of these requests, uh, such as Chuck's and, and uh, evaluating them and funding what we think is, is important. I, I fully believe uh, that the fiber will, will be something that uh, will help the town out and I think it's something that uh, the board will certainly take a serious look at. Uh, we can't make any uh, definites tonight, but uh, I think you've done a nice job in the presentation and uh, we all recognize the need in town for, for it. Well, my, my only question or concern is, so uh, there's a certain amount of right, more time to have which we want or common bands or whatever they're already being served. <clears throat> if we don't persuade those people to join their network, then uh, is it still feasible? Is it still going to work? Yes. So we uh, drafted a feasible system model. It's one of the very first steps. Um, and PC Fiber has long contended that in order to break even on fiber, Six subscribers per month. And so, obviously, in places with less density, you have to have some amount of uptake that's more density in the coverage. However, uh, the modeling we used, if I recall correctly, is somewhere in the ballpark of 75 to 80% adoption for the people who are underserved, with a much more meager 30 to 40% adoption than people who already have good service uh, because we might be able to do it. A little less expensively because we're a not for profit, uh, because we're locally operated and, and a community owned interest. There is going to be some people, and some people just hate Comcast for good reasons or bad. Um, and so there are definitely people, PC Fiber has found, that will switch off of, of companies like that for a local option when provided one. But we absolutely do not need all of them, or we expect all of them. Want to consider staying on something like Comcast, for example, you would not be bundled into the TV option. Um, so, people who want you know, Comcast cable TV are going to get uh, you know, the, the um, benefit of the bundling that they get by, by bundling cable TV service and internet service uh, at a, a more discounted rate. So, the, the areas that are already served, like rather than going to get Comcast, this one will still be bundled by another line up the road. So we, we will have an option. Everybody will have this option. Eventually, yes. Eventually. Yes, that our mission is to serve. Well, let me caveat that with our uh, mission is specifically dictated to ensure everybody has fast, reliable internet. And so there, we may get into agreements with incumbent providers in certain scenarios to say, you are our uh, service provider by proxy. So it may not always go by every address. And, and frankly, I, I personally think that's what we should try to pursue when it comes to Waitfield, Champlain, and Telecom, since they are such a great provider. However, a company like Comcast, we're a little more uh, interested in going and what we're building to be a more option. And I think it's, uh, you know, even our good providers, competition is good. You know, and they're, they're, they'll step their game up maybe a bit as well. Uh, let me just check to make sure. Are there any questions uh, from the computer or anyone on the computer? Um, yeah, I just have a quick question. How can the public get access to these slides that Chuck just presented? Uh, you can get them from uh, Sasha. He's going to send them to uh, Sasha, and then she will. Uh, she can send them out to you. Okay. Yep. All right, so let's go ahead. Uh, let's see, are any other questions for Chuck? For Chuck, is there anything else you want to finish up with? All right, thanks. That was exciting. Sure.
All right. So uh, next agenda item, we have um, David, our zoning administrator. He's on for some E911 road names and VRB fees. I believe David is online. David, are you there? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Um, let's see. Maybe I can turn this up. A can you bit. hear me? I can hear you. But hold on just a minute, David. Oh, that's all right. No, you're all right. I'm just going to clear it up here. Very good. All right, David. Um, so go ahead and present what you have for us this evening. Okay. It's not going to be nearly as complicated as the CV fiber talk you just had. I've listened to that in both towns, and I have the utmost admiration for those people that are working toward that goal. Clearly, they are doing a good job. They're, they're doing a lot quicker than I anticipated them when originally approached with it. Yes, they're good. Okay, so there are three E91 issues to bring to the board's attention tonight. Uh, there would be three road name or two new road names to be designated and one road name change. The first new road name is requested by Mr. Rivers. They've got a private driveway that is located uh, in the middle of the old Route 100 um, entrances and exits. It's feeding a large piece of land and they're going to have multiple structures on that. So they would like the road name identified so that addresses don't have to change as subsequent structures yeah. are built as is gonna happen with the Galligan Acres situation. Mr. Rivers has requested Rivers Retreat Road as his first choice. He has two other choices, but he would really like that one. I have done the research and it is not in conflict with anything in the neighboring towns. It sounds confusing. So I would recommend that the board consider accepting that name for that private road. And move to accept uh, Rivers Retreat Road. Rivers retreat. retreat, is that correct? Correct. I second. Any seconds, any further discussion on Rivers Retreat Road? All in favor vote aye. 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 All right, David, move on. Okay, number two is um, a subdivision that was recently approved by the DRB for Robert Wimble. There will be three structures on that driveway access, again, requiring a road name. Um, the applicant, Mr. Carr Wimble, has requested one of three names. The first choice would be Robert Ramble, R-O-B-E-R-T apostrophe S, R-A-M-B-L-E. His second choice would be Whitney Way, W-H-I-T-N-E-Y, W-A-Y, and the third would be Lilac Lane. Once again, Robert's Ramble, I have checked in the brief time I had because Carl dropped it off about 10 minutes ago. Um, I have not had a chance to check the other two, but Robert's Ramble is clear. If that's acceptable to the board, I would recommend you name that road Robert's Ramble. We had number one was Robert's Ramble. Correct. Um, number two was um, Whitney Way. Whitney Way? Correct. And number three was Lilac Lane. L A N E. Right. I like Lilac Lane best, but he likes Robert's Rumble, and that's his property or Ramble. So I would uh, move we accept Robert's Ramble. Okay. Any further discussion on uh, Carl's name? All right. All in favor, vote aye. Aye. All right, David, go ahead and move on. Number three, this is a road name change of Gallagher's Acres 
This was caused by uh, a historical error, to be actual. Um, this was brought to my attention by the state E91 officials. I presented this to you a couple of weeks ago and said I would check with the owners to see if they had a recommendation for a road name because they will be going through the hardship of changing their address. I've made two trips. I met with three of the folks on the first weekend and two of the folks on the second weekend that I went. Um, they had indicated they were gonna try to do a group get together, but that did not happen. The suggestion that was presented uh, from one landowner was to name it after their dog, Clover. So her suggestion would be Clover Way. Uh, the other resident that did give a preference or concern because they get numerous packages from UPS and um, FedEx and Amazon for business reasons, realizing that this may be an impact to them, wanted the name change to be as small as possible so that it would minimize confusion with- Hey, David, try to speak up, please. So that it would minimize confusion with deliveries. So based on that, I am suggesting that the road be named Gallagher's Acres Extension. It is currently Gallagher's Acres for those properties. So they would just have to add an EXT to their address. So FedEx and whoever should see that it's still Gallagher's Acres and know that they're in the ballpark. Yes. Yep. David, that makes sense uh, to me. I think the rest of the board is shaking their head. Um, so I'd move that we go ahead with Gallagher's extension. Thank you very much. I think that's the Gally, seconds and all in favor, vote aye. Aye. Okay, David, you may speak. Okay, the next thing is when I took this job in 2019, there was the change in the state recording fee requirements from 10 to $15. So I updated the um, Moortown permit application fee schedule at that point. And I, did you get a chance to get this from Sasha? This was- Yeah, we have it in front of us. Okay. So that's what has been in place for the last two years. And that is what I've been using as the fee schedule. Unbeknownst to me, in one of the instruction PDFs or instructions for applications to conditional use, there is a statement that the fee schedule for conditional use is $250 slash $300, which is significantly higher than the $75 that is on the fee schedule that I have been charging or requesting from the applicants. So I need to resolve this conflict. Uh, nobody has complained about the $75 fee that I've been charging. Um, I have some outstanding applications that will be impacted if we raise the fee to 250 slash 300. And I don't understand why this informational page has plus 250 slash 300. There's no guidance on why it's 250 or 300. So I guess I would ask the board to reflect on this. I don't know if it's something you wanna make a decision right away, but make you aware that there is a conflict between what's in the fee schedule and what is in one of the application instructions PDFs. I think what we'll do is we'll have uh, Sasha, maybe she can work with you um, and just do a little research into this. Um, there may be a reason why we're in that document. There is 250 and 300. Um, but what we want, we want to make sure that we're covering our costs, but we're not in this to, to make lots of money on folks. We want people to come and build. Um, so let's try to figure out what 
what the best cost is. And if it's still 75, please come with that recommendation. But if you think it's 200, then let's hear from you then as well. Is that all right? That is, that is absolutely fine. But what I also will suggest is I take the cost out of the instructions and just have them in one location, the fee schedule. So there's never a chance of confusion again. Yeah, no, I think that's, once we resolve this, I think that's, that's certainly the thing to do. And so why don't we get together again at our next meeting and resolve it with the information you guys provide. Okay, so I, I will uh, work with Sasha on that. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. Anything else? Uh, it's hotter than heck out there. <laughs> yes, it is. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate your time tonight. All right. So let's go ahead um, and move on. We have roads. Uh, let me just see what's on that here. Yeah, we're right on time. So uh, reports of communication. Sasha, do you want to go ahead? And where are you at? Um, <laughs> Next meeting, there's going to be a sidewalk hearing on the next part of the sidewalk at 6.30, just so everybody's aware, and then the one already. And he will be joining through Zoom. That's the engineer. All right. John, what do you got for us today? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Nothing. Just sitting there looking good. All right. Ray, how about yourself? Okay. Got it? Don down to the far corner. All right. And um, so I have one thing. We, we did get an email, and I don't know if it got forwarded through. It was from David. Um, about the schoolhouse on 100B. Um, I don't know if anyone had an opportunity to reflect on that, but I think it's something we should investigate to see uh, what the deal is. Um, I just stopped by briefly to look at it at the car, but it looks like a nice building. I don't know if there's anything else to it, but does anyone have time to kind of investigate that so that we can, uh, at our next meeting, have, you know, Side of something we want to pursue at all. I think it could be had fairly reasonably, but it may not be something we want regardless. Strictly. Inflation, let's say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think that yeah, the old school is quite interesting. I have been in there before when you were working on the matter of the driveway. We were trying to think of ways to incorporate that building into some kind of a, you know, history in there, or, you know, have the school be able to use it for classes to, you know, yep. to sort of like in the other days, so give me an informational place. Something do you, Don, do you have the time to follow up to David and the, the person from Green Mountain Power to see what what their intent is. Yeah, I remember one time I was just talking to uh, Miss Mary Powell, who's retired. I don't think no, she's she retired in some years. Yeah, you know, chat her on the phone. So, um, and they were actually interested at that time. Just, you know, yeah, I I don't think there's anything that they would really want much for. I mean, they're looking just to split it off and get rid of it. Yeah. It doesn't cost them anything. Um, you know, you know the and find out who the person is and find out because there's been some conflict, uh, conflicting information. First, they were and they weren't going to. So, if you can just get to the bottom of it, come back next time. Yeah. Maybe I can talk to somebody yeah. Okay. Perfect. All right. Um, and that's all I have for uh, announcements, communications. Um, we have the select board minutes of uh, May 17th. Uh, to approve. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of 517. Second. 
Thank you, Kelly. Any discussion on the uh, minutes? Hearing and seeing none. Um, all in favor, vote aye. Aye. All right. So um, now let's go ahead on. Um, we have the town hall library committee uh, presentation. I think. Um, all right. We got. We have fifteen minutes that we can. Oh, we always have other things to do. No, nah, why don't we go ahead and wait for her? Um, so let's go ahead into uh, some old business stuff. Ray, why don't we uh, start with your first topic? Okay. Um, I guess we'll start with the last meeting we had some discussion about trail accessible views. Yes. I believe uh, now. There is no agreement looks like we have that we would give them stone. No quantity was ever fine. So I think what I, I like to resolve this, and, and the reason we're doing that is because uh, we could not find what the actual trail was. So instead of spending thousands of dollars on a survey trying to determine where the trail was, we determined, or the site board determined at that time, we'll just give them some stone and keep the trail open where it is now. So <clears throat> I guess what I'm proposing is maybe we write up some sort of agreement with Jeff that give them so much stone per year or, or you know I like to just formalize it more going forward rather than having this discussion every year. It would thus far this year we brought up about six yards. He would like three more yards. And I'll like review it with the part part you thought that compared to the rest of the town trails that was in line with what we had been doing. But I don't know of any other agreements on any town of the other town trails, any landowner, you know, that, that we have here. Right. So um, I think I, I think that's probably a good idea of two things. Um, I think we should probably make a, a put together an, an agreement, but we should also perhaps um, some money in the budget to actually figure out where the trail is. Um, so that way, I, and I think we have something up on Freeman Hill as well. Yeah. Um, so I think each year, and we don't have to go into it how much now, but we should be putting some money in and trying to identify a, a, these trails each year. And so this agreement could go over a couple of years till that, that is done. Uh, I think long range, I think we ought to try to make sure everyone knows where their, their property is and where the trails are. Um, that would be the ideal thing. And I understand we don't want to spend the money, but if we put out 5,000 a year or so, five to 6,000 a year, it was, you know, we should know where our roads are. <laughs> um, so why don't, if you want to, uh, Ray, actually, I'll, I'll work with Sasha and actually Cheryl, and maybe we can put together. Uh, a little agreement and then we'll share with the board uh for a walk over there at uh, Jeff the Goose. Okay. All right. Yeah, the rest of the plan would be like to do a survey. Start to actually survey where they are. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's what we got we need to go forward. Um and there's several of them around town. We have this one, we have the one up on Freeman Hill, I think it's gonna be coming up, but uh, there's a lot more than that. So uh, that would be a start. But this way, this guy, I know he's come a couple different times and I know there is a verbal agreement there. So uh, we'll do that. All right. Second on my list was, uh, uh, so the surveyors went to Dean Moulton's and they found a pen, but the actual pen that's missing is not the one they found. So the surveyors are going to go back and, and they sent us a bill for like $400. It's 
find the thing that's already there. The original estimate I think is 15 million dollars. They're going to go back within the next week or so. We met with Dean Moten again to try to find, and that is missing. Yeah, Dean Moten's in there. No. Is there a survey that indicates that there is a pin there, or is it just Dean telling them there's a pin there? Dean, uh, Dean pretty much says there's a pin there. Martin, I looked at it, Martin. I mean, he says if they dug it out, they would have been there. It's hard to say. I mean, it's right out there. So does it make sense that there would be another pin? I mean, why would this pin that they found be there? The pin they found was not in the location. Okay. It was at a different, it was closer to his house. There's a the other property somewhere. So all right. So they I think they can probably go back, but um I'm surprised they're not bringing a flat that would show where the pin is. Yeah, I mean, I like that. Are they going to do a survey for the information? I mean, shoot a line type of thing? Yeah, I mean, they, they, they've gone to the town records. And, uh, I don't know if they took the different program. I think they went to the wrong location the first time. But they found a pin that was missing, but it was not the wrong pin. Well, it wasn't missing if we didn't know about it. So uh, I really don't want to bill for that if they went up went to the wrong yeah. place. So we have a page. Have a page. All, right. All right. So let's let's hear from them if they can go to the right area and then uh, go from there. Hmm. All right, number three, right? I think, you know, uh, it's always, it has been our policy to allow uh, ATVs and things on our class four and four roads, uh, as long as they're registered. And, you know, I think until we can finalize the policy, we should continue with that. And, you know, we're going to get a policy, formal policy. We're just going back to where it was before this year, before the legislative change uh, rules. So I'd like to say well, the town will still allow ATVs, ETVs, unregistered, registered ATVs, ETVs on our class four roads and trails. And I don't think so we haven't, I haven't, sorry? We, we have class four roads and trails. No, we always have. But we always have. Right. But the, the rules changed last year. I think the wording is now. The legislator put it back to the towns. They have to establish their own policy for this class four rules. So, what I like to is oh, it has to be like we have to kind of write it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's what you want to say. Yeah. And I think when, when looking at that, we can also, I think from what I got from this, we can look at our class three too, because a lot of the class four. You have to ride on a class oh, three right. to get to your four. And in a lot of places, riding on a class three is almost no different than riding on a class three. So, and what, what would the requirements be? I mean, is it your simple ATV requirements, registered, inspected, over 16, wear a helmet? All right, so while you guys are working on the, the, the loop, that loop, quota, I'm calling it, uh, restrictions or such. Why don't you put something together on that as well? Right. The ATVs, right? Well, so well, they use the class four rules and trails. Yeah, that's just curious. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know the answer to that. But. All right, Ray. Uh, Other side of the wall. the parking lot. Uh, oh, estimate for the. Yeah, yeah so I put together an estimate based on economic degrees. You know, yeah, so that will be, we'll submit that 
to um, the Harvard board. Uh, yeah, yeah. Very good. So, Ray, I'm going to uh, spend you there. It's eight, uh, seven o'clock. So, why don't you go into the presentation? Um, yeah. Anna, it's up here. Maybe they hope you're going to get that. Too bad. Share my screen. That's a great perspective. Can everyone see that okay? All right. So take it away, Don. So, um, So it's about uh, what the group was uh, uh, working on in five thousand five about um how the roles in the community. So uh it was like the group was you know first back in the region. And I just wanna put out there that um in fourteen years in twenty thirty five we will be 200 years old. And uh, I think the rest of the group would agree with me that we have an opportunity now uh, to look at some of the possibilities for the town hall and look at it as the possibilities as it can being a, continue to be a center of our community and a community center. So tonight's meeting is not about all the little details that we've found, but more of just to kind of bring you up to where we are and where we should go from here. So there's the first, uh, first slide there. I don't know if you can read that. I don't know if we should put this back there so the people coming in on the screen. Then we can hear you and then we can send the slides out. I thought they had a really nice way of putting it. Where's my movie? So we might recommend to make this past them the community center in the town. Since it was built. So I like to add in there. So we wanted to. Um, one of the things we did as we've been meeting since uh, I think we started meeting in March or end of February was we talked about um, earlier uh, community interactions and uh, some of the stuff that surveys that the library, library had done and talked about how we could maybe go what we'd do to go forward in terms of community engagement. And, um, but pretty much what we found from our own little mini survey of the six or so people on the committee reaching out to people and the early survey surveys is that people want to have a place where they can come to and gather and they'll come to programs and see people and let's we'll go on to the next slide and you'll see you know so community events which obviously have been one part of the history here and actually clock you said you were going to take these slides right <laughs> I'm sorry. So, should I put the want me to bring it? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so, I think we all are aware this place has been a hub for uh, community events for decades. Uh, my parents' 50th wedding anniversary was here. Uh, we've all come to events here that um, are, are not related necessarily to any town business, but are related to our families uh, and friends and, and groups that, that we're affiliated with. And, you know, we've got, you know, the kids have been involved. There have been uh, 
adults and seniors. Uh, it has been, um, you know, and it is a focal point uh, of this particular village uh, in Lower Town as well. Uh, and also the programs and meetings, um, you know, we have had um, uh, lots of formal meetings here, uh, going back to the, uh, the town office when we were working on that. Uh, it's been uh, a site for aerobics classes, uh, ballet classes. Uh, there have been, um, I think way back when there's even some fly tying classes that perhaps we could resurrect again. So it's been, uh, you know, a really varied building with, with lots of different um, groups uh, that have been, um, had, a, you know, had the fortune of being in a, in a great space. And yes, that is Jane Fonda in the middle. We were let in on the fact that in the 80s, some ladies used to come do Jane Fonda videos here, although there's no photos, we're told. <laughs> so, but here and there are some of those other pictures um, really have to do with library programming that we've been doing over the past few years and would love to continue to do as an active partner, really hosting and helping facilitate all this community programming and events. Uh, we did a talk on the concept of race that was pretty provocative and well attended a couple of years ago. We have book clubs that meet here. Driver's Ed is wrapping up in the basement right now. Uh, we had a the last program we did before the world shut down was a drive-in movie night with kids building their own cars out of cardboard and watching cars. Um, birding by ear, we have been doing every year, have the slideshow part here. So there's just a lot of opportunities for the library to help make some of this happen. And then of course there's traditional library services. So you can see around you, we have books, audiobooks, DVDs. Tuesday was our first day reopened since last November. We have 25 people come in. Very excited to be back. Very excited to look at the books, touch them, browse them, pick them out themselves. We offer a lot of technology access, not only do we have patron computers. Uh, we got a grant, so we got some new Chromebooks that people can use in their cars uh, or on the porch. We have scanning, copying, and printing services. And of course, the free Wi Fi. We early on turned our password off so people could come use the Wi Fi at the height of the pandemic. And then Waitsfield Telecom uh, was gracious enough to donate the community hotspot here. So there's two ways to get online here now. Um, can be a library of things, which is kind of a new exciting aspect of borrowing stuff instead of books. I did apply for an equipment grant, which I'll find out about the end of this month to uh, get like a bocce ball set and some tennis rackets and other equipment that families and people can borrow and use at the rec fields. So you don't have to have your own bocce set to go play bocce. Um, I brought up cake pans, but then was told everyone needs to have their own bunk pan. So maybe not cake pans, but the idea of those things that you maybe use a couple times a year, not everyone needs to own one. Work and homework space, we had a, a small group of fifth graders that were starting to come on Tuesday afternoons uh, before the pandemic. They felt too old for Mecca, but still needed a place to be for an hour or two after school or someone that's working from home and just wants to change it up and spend a few hours here. And then finally, this idea of being able to have chance encounters with your friends and neighbors, just having a place to go where you can spend time connecting with each other. So I think we've all been to a private event here, a birthday party, an anniversary party, a shower, a dance, and probably a lot of us have hosted a party here. Um, I myself had a sixth grade graduation party here 15 years ago. It's a great space. There's tables, there's chairs, there's space that you don't have in your home. There's a kitchen that you can warm food up in. Um, I think most of the people that we talk to want to see that continue. Uh, one interesting thing we found when we talk to people about funding is there are some grant opportunities for non-traditional spaces that we hadn't really thought of. Um, maker space, repair cafe, co-working space, um, coffee and bake goods station. 
we thought it would be worthwhile if there was funding for something like this to put it out to the community to see if there's an interest. Some of these uses um, we hadn't originally thought of, but are really interesting. So uh, Carla Lewis, who's also on our committee, uh, has done a lot of work on this. We've just started a sort of a group document where we can put potential funding sources. Um, you guys have already been working with the Preservation Trust of Vermont. I believe that's where the window uh, renovation is coming from, but there's definitely more opportunities there with the historic buildings. Um, there's an AARP Community Challenge Grant. There's just a bunch of grants. And uh, one interesting thing that came out of the meeting with the Preservation of Trust of Vermont was the idea of sort of once you define the uses of the space, that's really what will point you to the funding. Um, of course, the ARPA funding that everybody wants a piece of is another potential opportunity. And there is a specific act in Congress right now around library infrastructure. It has not yet passed, but if it did, it would be a significant source of funding for, for building improvements and construction. But again, it's sort of once we figure out the uses, that's that's going to determine the funding. Did you want to say anything else about that? Um, no, just that once so we've been talking to the Preservation Trust, uh, we had a site visit here, and it even gets down to the, the funding available just to help do a study for uh, accessibility and you know, fire code safety. I think this uh, cultural facilities grant is also another opportunity in terms of accessibility and, and other issues like that. So, as John said, we've done a lot of work, and the work that we've done isn't captured completely on these slides. But we thought before we go too far down any one path, we would come meet with you let you know, you know what we've done and ask uh, for two things. One, feedback about these uses that we, we've looked into and we support and um, sort of an approval from you of the direction that we're going, which is the town hall as a community center. So that's the first thing. And then the second thing is a lot of these uses, you know, we've gone on a presumption that the library is going to be here. So we were just going to ask the school board to maybe formalize the relationship with the library trustees in whatever way that looks like. And then uh, we have next steps that we were hoping to take, which is uh, more engagement with the community. I think people are interested to see some design ideas. What would it look like? How can community events and private events coexist with what's currently here? Um, and then we want to continue to gather information on the nuts and bolts of building maintenance, uh, ADA safety codes, upgrades, and possible funding sources for those things. So the community engagement, I think you already know, we did get a $3,000 grant to support that work. Uh, anything from Renting tents to host conversations in different parts of town was one idea. Uh, doing some design mock-up tape on the floor, cutouts of what the different modifications might look like to do in an open house so people can walk through and give feedback. Um, yes, yeah, so we have funding to, to do that work. Uh, we have to spend it by October 31st, so that would be the timeline. Yeah. Yeah. Callie, we got down there. You got any thoughts, questions, concerns? I love the idea of having, like, being in here and just having the markup in here and seeing where things are going to be. Because when we have talked about the library being over here, like, this is not what I had envisioned at all, even looking at it on the page. Like, this is not what I thought. And as my husband says, I'm not a vision board idea person at all. 
Like, <laughs> give me an idea. I can't even do that. I'm like, no, it's going to be terrible. Can't see it. And then when it happens, I'm like, oh, this is really awesome. So I think, like, being in here and having, like, stuff to move and see and then looking and figuring out what to do in the basement to make it better what can we do to also draw people down there and utilizing some of that space too right and that's where a lot of the ideas like the maker space and the coffee bar and the co-working space and those thoughts could be realized great from you thoughts no, I, I really I like the presentation. And I do like the way the library is looking. Uh, I encourage you to go forward where you are. Um, have you, you know, parking is always an issue here. I hope that's going to be, I don't know what the magic plan is going to be, but. Parking garage. <laughs> parking garage. <laughs> yeah. But certainly you have to think about that as well as anything else. And so has there been um, good feedback throughout the community? I mean, I know you're a great core group. We're wanting it. Well, well I would like, Denise, you're, I know originally you were very hesitant about anything changing and going on in here. What's your thoughts now? No, I think there's a lot of a lot of questions to be to be answered, but I think I just want to get a feeling of people think we're going in the right direction and the committee is working in the in the good for all, I which I I believe they are. Yeah. Right, kind of how it would work. I mean we can all and I guess we, none of us can visualize things. So yeah, we better mock it up here. Um, John, did you have any? Yeah, I, that's that's what my main concern is. Historic is the same we have it for them. Um, and certainly, I think you know having mark up that would be you know, that would be a good good route to go. So and, uh, you know, certainly as Sally pointed out, a lot different than on paper. And again, and, and to Callie's point as well, I think we need to do something with the downstairs. And that was been my kind of soapbox from the beginning that I was hoping we could do a little bit more down there. I think it's a space that once used too, but. Outside of the library and the library's footprint, if 
we are committing to using this building as a public space and a community center, we want to make sure that it's accessible and safe. And so there are some necessary uh, improvements or modifications that will have to be made for that, whether or not the library is here or not. I want the library to be able to say that. That's also something to get feedback from the community on what's the best way to do that. But to that, to that, uh, speaking towards that, we might have to, um, while we're doing this engagement and mock up such uh, for, for the community engagement, we used to, there's a gentleman in Waitsville, Bill Gallup, who we've talked to, who through the Preservation Trust, we can get a grant. So I can work with the work with Cheryl. And we can still do it concurrently with the grant that we have. And he does like twelve hundred dollars or something, and they pay half. And um, he would come and assess the building and be able to give us a better idea. Of, you know, what is what is a ramp to the stage? Room, you know, uh, type of thing. You know, there's been lots of different thoughts thrown around how we can accomplish that. Uh, you have to start back here. It's twelve one. <laughs> Yeah, and that way we could also then also see the basement, you know, the back, you know, egress and access out of the basement for what kind of uses we would be able to do down there. What upgrades potentially could take place with the lift is not the most inviting place to, if you're handicapped to come up right into the middle of the room. So, anyway, like no, I we, said, we didn't want to get into all, we would really, these are things that we spent. No, those are, but those are things uh, as far as access um there are there are some michelle you may have been on the board at the time um there was some work done um because that's when we decided to actually fix the um the lift uh, prior to that we were going to we look to have a you know a walk or something put in it was we were gonna have to wrap it around the building right yeah i mean it had to start here and end up in the middle of the road over here so it didn't it just didn't work um No, I think it's so there and you, there is a grant available for that. Yes. Well, for would, the initial assessment. Yeah, for the initial right. Yeah. To have Mr. Gallup come in and give us twelve hundred cents worth of program. Yeah, I mean, just, you know, we can talk about what some of the uses that we're considering and we can look at the stage and access and basement and some stuff. Yeah. yeah, it's better to have the information and and not so I would certainly encourage you to uh, reach out to Cheryl Lynn and, and uh, work with her on getting the grant. If you guys already haven't gotten that, I understand that. I think one of the things that helps with that is that Facility, if the space was not necessarily used for voting, I don't know whether it would be required to have a facility in the right group, but certainly a lift to make the accessibility to the base controls a goal. All right, so you guys want to move forward. Um, certainly, it sounds like you've got. Uh, board willing to to move forward with you as far as looking what's the max of the year you're asked as far as the next uses on this um so yeah uh, let's uh, go move forward with that um i think as far as an agreement um 
Michelle, maybe sometime you and I can talk and just share a little bit about what you what you guys are thinking. All right, Jen, yeah, maybe sometime you can reach out to me and we can just talk a little bit about it, what you guys are thinking. And, uh, you know, we can go from there if that's all right. I might just add one other thing. Um, and I, I, I know I found a few things that might be successful. One of the ones that would be good for the board to be thinking about or the board to even ask the community as we go forward to think about is we all love having our town meeting here, you know, we want to continue to have the town meeting here. But we do have an issue about the voting on the stage as far as access. But then, from what I understand, also because of the physical size and the booths and the people walking by booths to go downstairs, you know, there's a, it doesn't really, isn't really kosher, if I can use that word. Right. We can stay, but we're still doing it. But so, in other words, in the future, is that going to be something that? Kind of, I think that has a little bit of a process in this. That should be in the discussion. Yeah, yeah. I don't think yeah. we should drive it, but no. it needs to be talked about, right. um, especially as elections are getting more and more scrutinized yeah. um, and a little bit more challenging than they used to be. Um, so yeah, yeah, I think that needs to be a part of that discussion. Yes, yeah, so we know that. I just wanted to. Yeah, no, no, no shock. Great, we appreciate it. Anything else, guys, ladies, for the library stuff? Don, I, I didn't mean to cut you off. I just want to make sure no, 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 no one has any other questions. Just make sure you let us know when they are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and we get minutes. Yeah. like every third meeting maybe or something like that you know or if there's something significant that comes up you can constantly look at can i get on or can i come in with public comment um but just you know every six weeks so you know every third meeting come in say hey we've been able to accomplish this change this or what direction here or that i think that would be all right what's that we're kind of hoping that we can maybe have something by like you know towards in the summer, which is here, but towards the end of the summer, that we can start to maybe show some people. And if we have a, a gathering, you know, when we have the gathering, we could have something there as well. You know, yeah, we got some work cut out ahead of us, but we'll see what we can pull off. Sounds good. I, you know, just, I think there's a lot of possibilities for the facility. I think one of the things that I don't think we met here quite joking comment about parking lot on the side. Town meeting day, there's going to be traffic all over the floor. Yeah. <laughs> there's going to be certain things that you know will be accepted, and we'll have to get get with it. And some will be some change, but no, I, it's a great facility. I really hope that we can do something with it. And um, was it Meg or someone said, energy re-energize the place, energize the place. You know, it's a sleepy little thing, but it's it's an awesome building. I I love it. You know, but. Uh, Yeah, all, you know, and generally we all like to be with other people, you know, and if there's comfort, you know, um, you know, it's a nice little area. Good stuff. All right. Well, if there's nothing else to you folks, we'll go ahead and move on with the. Uh... No. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Um, just that there was the, the end the uh, community engagement grant. 
has the has the um, grant granted, like you have it, and it's not October thirty first. Is there anything um regarding like any specific questions, or is there anything that you all need for help with that piece of it? I don't think so. I can sort of make a budget up on the fly to apply for it, but it's, it's very easy to apply for a variance if you go more than ten percent off of that. Um, I did include a significant chunk for design consultation, so we should be able to hire someone that could help put the ideas and requirements um, into a visual uh, form for us. And do you feel like you have enough here, like within this conversation, to like guide that? I think so. Yeah. And you, if you have more questions or things, reach out to us. You know, we're better at answering questions than. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, I think the sentiment yeah. in the room is that it's time to give people something to look at and give feedback on. They can say they hate it or they want to see it different or they love it, and that would be a way to sort of move forward with how to accommodate this multi use idea that, that we're moving forward with. No, I think that's a good assessment. Very good, thank you. All right, we'll move on and you guys stay if you'd like. <laughs> Michelle, nice to see you. Mark, I saw you uh, logged in first to see if we were here and then uh, I'll tell you. <laughs> thank you everyone for uh, coming. Denise, nice to see you. All right, so. Um, Perfect. Thank you, Corey. Have a nice night. We'll do that. Callie said she need to get her exercise tonight. So we're <laughs> so, I didn't work yesterday and two and a half hours of cutting on Saturday. Nice. <laughs> All right, well, I can see you, you got a nice tan going. Ray, let's get back to Ray. You had uh, a few more things yeah, for us. Yeah, a few more things. Uh, so we had talked, uh, as you know, we had produced a slide back out here. Yes. We're damaged by actually truck traffic. And so, you know, Blue Boys, we want to help the town, we want to make it right, you know? So what we'd like to do is, is work with the town crew, let them, if they could pull the sidewalks out, we could, we could pour them. That way, we're going to we're gonna come down and do some topsoil work, anyways. And I can have that same crew do that. And it's okay if we have to have Barton pull out the two pieces of sidewalk and we'll pour them eight inches thick instead of the five. So the boys should be able to do that, right? Yeah, I think so. I, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, could, we can direct them. We'll be yeah, just go down and make sure. I mean, I'm not thinking he wouldn't know, but if they're Together, we won't break up something else when they pull it. Right. You know, actually, there may be some soft padding. We'll, we'll think of the size and stuff. Okay. Yeah. But what you're trying to avoid is just bringing it up. Quick. Yeah. Get, you know, you know, we can just work with the town on that and get that done. Go forward. And if everybody's in agreement on that. No, that's good. You form it eight inches, you said? Yeah. I think that, you know, I asked Pat Travis to look at it. He hasn't got back to me, but I explained them what we told. I think you've seen them. Yeah. You can see where the trucks have gone. I thought, yeah. I think it's pretty clear. That's the only problem we have. So, you know, I, I think it's good. Yeah. No. Nope, good. I appreciate that. Um, so you can talk to Martin about it and just know. It's okay with you. Yeah. Just work it out with him. Yeah. Uh, we want to. We don't want him to dig it out when we're not ready. Yeah. Uh, no. Make sure you guys are all timing. <laughs> do it the same day. Yeah. For so we don't need anyone hurting themselves on it. Empty hole there. All right. I don't think we can do anything with Schultz until you know we do this other part, the other side of the road. You'll just the angle coming in from the north side, turn into that driveway, is, or the south side, I should say. The south side, you know, it's 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 hard. He, he makes that turn, it's kind of a Pull around, type yeah. of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, 
theoretically, if the state would allow us to widen that driveway to 10 more feet or five more feet, cut that angle, that's the problem. It's about a foot. So, I, what I told him was, I think we could deal with it when we do the other side of the road. We'll work out something. Yeah. Rather than make another separate project. Uh, we, you know, I did prompt some link because it is a state highway. They have regulations. And we know how it is to deal with that. Well, there's something we can do when we're doing the other side. We'll, we'll do it. Yeah. yeah. Mark and I did meet with the attorney down on River Road, went over the, the, the product, the, the whole case as far as over the machine or whatever. So, and mediation is set up for June 30th. Who knows where that's going to go? Well, also, the, the, the scooter. The scooter. Yeah, the scooter. Yeah, that's, uh, that'll be interesting. I mean, that's for sure. Yeah, it is. And anything else there? That's it. Uh, with Martin, though, we have an issue with the lawnmower. Right. So, in case I last week or a week and a half ago, I got a call from Martin or one of the guys. Um, the lawnmower just uh, quit. So, we found out the transmission is not. Martin's been using his mower to mow the lawn for us. And either way, it's going to cost us between, uh, he thinks, around 3500 to have it fixed. Uh, maybe a little bit more, but he's going to do it, or Sean's going to do a little work on it uh, in the shop. But in Martin's words, he doesn't see why we we don't do it. We need, really need to go forward and move it. Um, there's nothing else to mow the war. Do the sidewalk at this point, so uh, I think we should go ahead and have it fixed, right? Seems like we should. I, there's money in the budget. I mean, I was looking. We've got maintenance money. I checked there's plenty of it, but it's one of those things. I, you know, I did ask him before he went into that to make sure that it was worth the, the money when we got done with it. Is you know, I don't want to spend thirty five hundred dollars and then have a three thousand dollar machine when we're done. You know. How old is the mower? It's, it's not that old. We're, it's probably was six or seven. No, it's a little older than that. He's getting some more information. He's getting some trade in information. But worst case scenario, we may have to go with the or not worst case scenario. The scenario would have, we have in front of us, we'll probably have to go with the fix at this point. Um, and it sounds like, based on what he's saying, it'll it'll be worth it. I mean, we'll be able to sell them all or get some trade in. It will be worth it. We're not going to lose uh, 3500 on it. Yeah, the next bowl after this one, the town of Bible Maybe we see they're out there right now. You know, there was a group on TV this morning advertising in the Burlington area, and they use all electric mowers. So, uh, How about do they use the same machine mower for plowing the snow, sidewalks? Is that it? And they use uh, solar, this, this particular group use solar even on their wagon that they put it around them. But um, so I'll have him go ahead. Yeah. I'll have him uh, again share any other information. But worst case scenario, we may be looking at it. It's more of a, not that we have to vote on, but I just want to make you aware that we may be spending some money on the John Deere. Um, you know, I could do it sometime, you know, maybe I'll just the back there. Something to back out, but it really doesn't make any sense to do that. I think mean, with the problem we have, it's just yeah, no, I mean, and that's that was my original. And if we need to get someone, I mean, I even talked to Eric if, they, if you need it once or twice or done, you know, you get him or this. I'm sure there's someone that could fly in and do it for us. But the reason we brought on Stefan is when we figured it all out, we were spending close to 15 grand on, right. yeah. on mowing and uh. That's half his salary, or more than half his salary. So, it's, uh, yeah, so that makes sense that way. Um, yeah, that's Sean and Sean Martin, tag team. Right there. 
Oh, thanks. Appreciate you. Well, thank you. Appreciate you allowing that and, and the guys uh, uh, doing it. But someone even said to me the other day that the lawn looked great. And I was like, well, it was probably because we're using a different mower. <laughs> I was going to talk to Martin and to have a call around to figure out what something like that would, you know, whether it's 100 bucks each and you know, or something like that. Because it's wear and tear, it's fuel and the pain in the ass bringing it here, you know. So, all right. Uh, so, if that's nothing, that's Ray, you with the um, Martin. So, we got those guys taken care of. They are on four days now, um, four 10 hour days. Uh, I was looking at the schedule coming back. I think we should probably have them back. And I don't look to be sure, but I think it's like the second week in September. It's around the fifth or something. That's like the first full week um, after Labor Day and such. And that the schools will be back in and uh, they can come back in, but we'll finalize that. I, just, I think around that time, we could make sense. But this will give them three or four months, three months to get out there and do four days of work. Um, did I get around with everyone else? Did anyone else have any? I know, Don, you said you had some uh, old and new business. Just go ahead, what you got? Um, well, uh, I guess a little bit with Don, hopefully, you guys don't all mention it. But I've been thinking, um, and I, I'm not really sure if I just heard Sasha to talk about this. The next move for the sidewalk on, I guess, what would be the west side. And um, I'm not quite sure where we are in the process. Um, but I'd like to actually maybe have the board start to make, or us start to think about maybe putting the brakes on the project for a little bit. And my reason being is one, to get the chance to look a little bit more at the transportation and speed to the village. And if maybe in working with the state of whatever the transportation board, we, if we would define like two bike lanes that would work sort of in traffic common, instead of a second sidewalk, we could have maybe add a couple of crosswalks and then just have the one there and not have all this other disruption and the possibility of we had a rather large extra on this one. So that maybe even if we still do the sidewalks down the road, we just maybe give it a little time to, to look at it. And then as I've been thinking this, because you know I ride through the village, and I was thinking about wanting to at least just throw it out there for people to think about. I was over in Gallagher Acres uh, this past week, and, and I found something on front row floor and met someone there. I was just talking to him, engaging him. Hey, I'm on the select board. And what do you think this is going to happen? You know, like, you know, and, such. and you mentioned something very interesting that one of the things that would really help that community over there, and there's another road right next to that, next to Gallery Acres, where there's some housing in, in there, some apartment housing, okay. stuff, right? Yeah. And he was saying um, how really, really badly they need it. They need a sidewalk. And I was going, huh. Oh, you know, so maybe, you know, because our town is so spread out and we do all these, you know, we may do something in the town hall, we've done this beautiful stuff in our village, but, you know, we could help, but we maybe if that same sidewalk grant that we're working on, maybe we could apply it to there. They, if they, the guy was saying, if we could have a sidewalk where a bike expresses, you know, it joins the sidewalk with a sock or whatever the fire, mm -hmm. snow fire is, you know, they could get to there, and then there's a sidewalk all the way in the water. So, anyways, just some food for thought that uh, I'm not sure on the sidewalk on the other side of the village is maybe the answer right now. So, that was one thing I wanted to just bring up. I have three others, so please, uh, I'm going to go fast. Um, a while ago, I did do a walk on the sand pit. Just you know, a while before Martin had his new information, and then just sort of let it kind of sit there as way to. And 
So we established a list, which I didn't bring today. And, you know, again, I wanted some time to pass by and find to me to get better. And, you know, this, we identified a whole bunch of issues, or not issues, things. There's even today biking in the town, you can see all the cars park, access to the river. So but one of the things I did from that is I um, took the liberty to do a soil test at UVM. Um, and so to look at the trees, to see if we can help, you know, at least do something, maybe feed the trees or take care of the trees. And I reached out to Cyril Holland, who's really, really busy. So then Mike Brown, who's, you know, is a bird's eye consultant, there's a forester. And he, he looked at the soil reports and he made some recommendations, you know, based on that. So I'm wondering if we should, I don't know if, if there's something, in, you know, there's maybe buy some fertilizer. Um, I think we could probably get some volunteers. We've got some wood chips there. I mean, I don't have exactly all the details, but it could help. The maple trees are another story. These are the hue, the hues in the cedar trees. So we could fertilize those and mulch them. Need some more organic matter, and then the maple trees. Unfortunately, you know they need their roots to spread out. It's very compact area. I'm not sure what we're doing. One's dead, two others are just yeah, right behind them. Yeah. You know, so you know maybe as we get further into the some of the things that were on this list, we have time another time. Uh, or we can, you know, we'll maybe we'll all do a walk there someday or something. There's some other ideas that I brought Craig Oskello with me, who's a landscape architect. You know, it's a process. I just wanted to. Look, yeah, you know, no, I so, think fertilizing, if there's trees down there that we want to save or that we want that are good shade trees, they're good, right? No, we, I think we should take care of them. And if there's a recommendation, you know, why don't we kind of work together, with, like you said, with Martin, uh, you know, we'll figure some. Yeah. Okay. Can't be a hell of a lot to. Uh, and Ray, why don't you give him the heads up so that he doesn't. Okay, no, I've talked to Brian about him and said, we, you know, told him about the soil reports, told him, you know, maybe at some point we'll get to the feed of the trees. But I can, Ray, I can work with you on that. We'll send you this email yeah, or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Okay. So that, it really depends on, I mean, we're not landscapers. Oh, no, 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 I understand. Mike said he would help, you yeah. know, and uh, yeah, once you meet with directors, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, um, yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of history with that. I mean, Ricky was a the DRB recommendation. Well, they got the recommendation from the landscape architect to do the fixed views, and I just don't think fixed views really cut it. <laughs> Yeah, that was right back at the beginning. Yeah, but they, they, they've come along. Oh, yeah, they've come along. But I mean, our variety is growing much faster. And that's why, that's why, the help of whatever they grow, we put the other varieties in there. Right. So, Once you put those in there, it's when the other ones took off. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, I don't yeah, know well, whether it was stirring yeah, up the yeah, ground and what you did. Yeah. The yeah, other ones didn't yeah. crap until those were in. Yeah. And then, well, we'll have to bring the tree to it now before we get going. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like a little bit of a community effort, maybe. Sure. Get some volunteers. Food. Um, so, two more items for the, for the, uh, yeah, why well, just, two. Two. yeah. This is a quick one. See this hat? Patty Moulton did this hat many, many years ago. I'm thinking maybe we could have this, do this again for the, for, for this gathering that we're talking about. It was all yeah. more time. Oh, no, no, it doesn't say that. You know, I don't know if you remember when she did these hats. It does surprise me. Yeah, no, it doesn't. <laughs> there's no, it says more town is a little thing for more. Yeah. And it's all faded now. But maybe it's something we could consider for the. Yeah, I know, think. We could sell them as a fundraiser for something or, you know, whatever. Who'd you say the thing? Patty. Oh, I don't know where she got them, but. Sure, you can find out or there's a little place that does that. Yeah, so, it's gonna be a so I'll keep posting on that for you. And last but not least, this really is the last one. I, I was wondering if the board 
we're 10 months away to, to the next election, you know? And I'm just wondering how we can, as a board, reach out to our community for some maybe more inclusion or some diversity or something to get some other people involved in, in our, we, we have certainly a vibrant committees, people on different committees and stuff, but how do we get some people maybe to be interested in being on the select board, for instance? I mean, you know, we're kind of there's some old guys on this board, yeah. and I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but it would be good to, I don't, and I'm, I don't have any answers at the moment, but maybe it's something we can think of. Maybe Vermont, the cities and towns might have some information that we could access, you know, to, you know, a lot of times we have positions in town that don't get filled, you know, we had people who didn't run for the select board, you know. Anyways, some, something to think about. Any other? Maybe keep it on a, you know, old business or something so that we kind of think about how we could, you know. Change the elections, you say? Or what? No, 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 not that. No. <laughs> the recounts. The recounts. That's, that's what I thought you were doing. Exactly. And all that. You know? <laughs> all right. So let's go ahead. Um, does anyone else have any old business? Yeah, I uh, actually on the, um, the engineering study out here. So here's where we're at. Um, originally, uh, the when CDRPC worked with DEC in terms of um, a budget, okay, it was based on forty thousand dollar budget. Um, where um, Worcester Consulting came in with at thirty two thousand, and our match was to be seventy five hundred. Okay. So right, right now, what we're looking at is either doing a gravel wetland or a fire retention area, uh, like, like at Harwood uh, or at uh, uh, Phillips Square in Waitsfield. If we did that, that would be 6,171. So where we're at is if we go ahead with the gravel wetland, we're not going to have to do that 7,500 because 30, the quote came in at 32,000. Right. The state will not cover the bioretention. So it's not a matter of spending more for the bioretention, but rather it's a matter for spending anything versus doing the gravel wet plant in that payment. And so get it. All right. So what's so right right now? You know, we had the meeting with uh, John Schultz and Alan, Alan Brown. John has gotten back on a few things. Alan has not gotten back to us on anything. They've got they've had pictures of examples of both the um, gravel wetland and the bioretention area. The in the gravel wetland, unfortunately, the examples didn't have that many plantings, but you know, we can, there can be plantings there. The gravel wetland works better. It takes care of 14% more phosphorus than, uh, than the uh, bioretention. And the drainage is, is better too because of the gravel. Um, so I don't know, what do you think? I mean, well, I, 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 again, <clears throat> The gravel wetland will have standing water versus the bio retention. Well, that's that's it, it, it sounds like it's not going to be any problem. <laughs> I spoke with Pam today and she said that you know the drainage is going to be about the same on either, either one. I actually thought the gravel wet drain better because. Yeah. I, I, the way I understood it, John, the way I understood it is, it, it would be eventually it will all drain, but the gravel wetland holds more water, it drains out slower. So, so it all comes back down to standing water. What's our tolerance? And how often or how much standing water? 
Well, that's it. That's if you've been to the storm. I mean, we were out there when it was fairly broad, and it was, there was some storm water out there. Yeah. And there has been, historically, there's been water out there. Well, the brook is not that far away. That's one of the stories. Um, in terms of mosquitoes, I know mosquitoes isn't an issue. Supposedly, it takes 12 to 14 days for them to breed. So, so that, that there shouldn't be an issue with that. Yeah. But, um, I mean, the just, I mean, the, neither resident was really vocal about opposing the project or not. Yeah. Uh, Maybe I'm exaggerating, but you know, it is a center of town. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd certainly like it to look as, as nice as possible. And, you know, we're, we were, you know, there's another way of looking at it is we were there to pay 7500 Now, we, if we do the bioretention, we end up paying less. Um, supposedly, the, the gravel wetland does things better than the bio again. How long is it drawn now? It's drawn with the, the gravel. The flat. gravel yeah. Right. <clears throat> How big is that area where it's big? It's actually two segments. It's two segments. Right. 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 <laughs> Ponds up there, the drains from there down into the other portion, the wet portion, and then from there, pipe gates it into the drainage system out here. Eventually, ends up in the river. So, so the, the initial forebay is where the water was settled. That's right off the road, right on the property. That's probably. 15 foot diameter, maybe something like that. And it'll be gravel looking. Yeah, it, you know, has some stone and gravel. And as opposed to otherwise, it would be a bigger rock. Is that correct? I think the bioretention would have a, a more of a precast structure, it's like a swirl structure. It gathers all the sediment in it, and you have to vacuum it out yeah, of there. That's, that's and then it goes from there into a the so that, that would be more maintenance to the body. Okay. Right. Well, I'm kind of inclined to go with the gravel. Yeah. And, and, and so it's more. Yeah. I, like, well, I don't know what our next step is. No, I just go for it. I would just, I would just let Pam know. Okay, we're ready. So that's so we have to have another public meeting or anything like that. Sure, it's not. I don't think so. I'm at the same point. But that would be nice. I mean, that's a project that's saving us. This is three hundred thousand dollar projects, roughly. Uh, quite frankly, I think. The reason we were getting to that money is because we picked up the tab on the um, the drainage of the sidewalk. Right. That was that was really state responsibility. It was. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. That got added to that project. Yeah. So it's kind of hard to come up with this, but we're good. I think I would go forward with that, John, and uh, let him know that way we can move forward with it. Okay. All right. Yeah. What else you got? Uh, oh, Michelle reminded me. Um, we never did the, the tree for that. So I guess I should get in touch with Michelle and see what the Yeah, I thought you had checked on the one or something at one point and then you said okay. But yeah, I think it's been on them, but, but just go ahead and find yeah, it. Yeah, I'll check it. Is that it? That's it. All right, I've got, um, so as I spoke last time, there was um, Lindsay, uh, yeah, Lindsay Staples had contacted Leanne, my wife, um, about 
more pets, more pets, uh, and such. Um, so Lindsay put something out on uh, front porch form and see if anyone was interested. Um, they didn't, so they met, it was just Lee and Lindsay showed up, but they've had the interest from other people. In fact, they talked to Michelle. Um, so let me just read you this here. Um, to the Moortown Select Board, a meeting together, those interested in planning Moorfest 2021 was worn on front page form, drew force a Zoom meeting for in person at the pavilion with Lindsay and Leanne uh, were present. Lindsay and Lindsay and Leanne would like uh, request nomination to head up the Moorfest More Fest committee. Um, they have researched, done some research so far uh, for fireworks and a Practical and plausible date is September 18th. That's something we wanted to um, look at. So they're, they're asking for um, recognition as a committee and they would work with obviously us as they always have in the past, the committee to um, run more for us. That's not a good date for me. Why is that? Um, the way that well, that well, we, we can work on the dates. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I think yeah, I think it's great. I'd love to do it. Yeah. We got, yeah. yeah, we should get and then get uh, the fire department. I, th I think they reached out to Stefan or they worked about. I think he said he was interested in doing a corn roast. Okay. Well, see, that's the good that they're getting this out. <laughs> Ah, he's officiating away. Oh, so the 18th is really not going to be a good date. So we'll let these guys know the 18th is not a good date. But um, Ray made a uh, motion. Is there a second on the motion? Um, any further discussion on the formation of the Moortown and the Moorfest Committee? All in favor, vote aye. Aye. All right, so Bill, I'll let him know that the 18th does not work. Um, but try to see what they can come up with uh, sometime in the fall and we'll work with uh, anyone that wants to then put more stuff out on front porch form uh, to uh, get that. Lindsay's with the PTA, so that, that's how the school part is involved. So they'll do, I think, like the, the beer and that type of stuff that they've done in the past. So it should be, it'll be good together and then maybe the committee can have something um we can do the hats um you know that type of stuff so and i suggested that um actually sasha can be the liaison for the more press than even us because that would be good too but uh, she can, she's worked on that in the past and so she knows a lot of what's going on and then that way just make sure that we get an eye on them because Lord knows we need it. <laughs> um, oh, and, and actually, I, I, I also might mention I'm going to be picking up a thread up or two tomorrow to plant in the, uh, the island at the, in the parking lot in school. All right. Yeah. Good. The hump, the hump, the hump where the others are. All right. So I guess I don't think there's anything else. We have a bunch of stuff to sign. So um, why don't we go ahead and do that and then get it out of here for everyone. But again, I appreciate everyone's patience in the last year and a half uh, with Zoom. And I think everyone is, I think we all managed it pretty well. There were some times when it didn't work as well as we would have liked it to. Um, but you know, it was new for all of us. And, uh, I appreciate everyone's help and patience and support. Are we going to continue with Zoom? Uh, I, what do you guys think? I mean, I, yeah, I think at this point, I mean, um, I know they have something planned for our next meeting um, for one of the presentations. But after that, yeah, we can just meet like that. Yeah. Nope. Um, because the meetings are they're on. If anyone wants to see the meeting, they're publicly they're available. Uh, if you want to come to the meeting, you can come to the meeting. Yeah. So, so when we had this meeting, we had a few more people that were here.
no, not really. The people that had business will attend them. Um, and they're so and the people who want to watch them on Mac TV or whatever the, the TV is they see in the valley will watch them anyways, and it's not live. So and I think it's it's been good, but it's rents course. Is that um, well, I've just noticed uh, that some of our other towns in the valley only from just reading the Valley Reporter, not to mention the first firsthand, but I guess there's been some towns that have adapted uh, to be able to allow, I don't know, it's quite strong. Yeah, I looked into a little bit. Building, but I know that we've got, you know, we've been discussing it uh, maybe the last time about how we would say, hey, yeah, we're going to make it. But One thing we would have to do is we would have to buy a camera. Yeah. Um, so you have to camera and then we have that well we have a projector here we could use um but you know i think that's you know i'm not at this point i don't think we need to do that if there was a uh, uh people that really couldn't get in or get out but you know we've never heard that and, you know the people who can't get out they, they don't have technology either you know if they're shut in there they probably don't have the internet access to get here anyway so um, but if someone hears something that every, someone feels really cut off and they need it, then let's look into it and we can invest into something. But at this point, I don't think we need to. Uh, maybe we can check out and find out what other towns are doing. It. They may have been able to do it in an economical way that would you know, get it work. I mean, my feeling is you'd need at least one or two other people to do it. You'd have to have someone run the camera uh, for you. So we'd have to have someone, so each time someone talked, you know, you'd hand to them. Um, you would need, I don't know, some kind of a microphone, right? So that everyone could hear into it as well. Speaker system. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I think well, maybe well, uh, maybe I can just maybe follow some of the other boards that are going to here. Or yeah. Technology. Maybe that we can get, you know, as we look into it. I don't know if it's tomorrow, but it might be something that people in the community will actually would like. You know, they would like to be able to join a community remote watching. Sure, we can look into it. I mean, uh, if you, you want know, to take time. Sure. All right. Anything else? All right. So let's um, we can just pass those down, John. A couple of them, and we'll start with these up here. And, and uh, just gonna, no, pass those two on without the. And then, So, one word I'm reading from the back of the town yeah. office. Or you can just get on your bike, Don. I know, I just come down to your office, right?
That's how I signed everything. Yeah. There's a couple curb cuts on top, and then there's the audit that needs to be. We all set then, everyone? All right, Ray in seconds. All right, all in favor, vote aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Good night, everyone. Yeah.